It was back in 1987 that Lindsay and I first visited Imlo, a village in the High Atlas Mountains in Morocco, and the gateway to Jabal Tubkal. Here are some photos from that trip. In Imlil, we teamed up with some Aussie lads, three Germans and an Austrian, and hired a guide to take us to the top of Tubkal, which at over 13,500 feet is the highest peak in North Africa. We spent a night in the Neltna hut, summited the next day, and then returned to Imlil. It was summer, so there was only a little snow on the mountain top, but it was quite a strenuous trek, and most of the Aussies didn't make it to the top, but instead stopped and waited for the rest of us. The next few days we spent walking in the villages around Imlo. It wasn't busy at all, and I can remember seeing only a few tourists. There was no bus from Asni to Imlo in those days, so we paid a few dirhams to sit in the back of a pickup, which promptly had a flat tyre. This year when we returned it was quite different. We booked a five-day all-inclusive stay at the Casper de Tubkal Hotel, which included private vehicle transfer from Marrakesh. It was billed as luxury trekking. Imlil was quiet, as this was in April, just after Covid restrictions had been lifted and flights resumed to Morocco. But we could see that the village had developed quite a bit in 35 years, yet it still retained some charm. In 1987 we'd stayed at the hostel, but this year we had a lovely comfy room to ourselves in the tower of the Casbah. Also the food was delicious. This is a view looking down on the Casper from the track going to Arend. This photo was taken from around the same spot in 1987 when the Casper was still a complete ruin. It's almost the same view but looks quite different now. The views are astounding. This year we had no intention of climbing Tubkal, but instead went on some local walks with Abderrahim, our personal mountain guide organised by the Casbah. Very early in the morning, this was the view from the top of the tower of the Casbah. The light kept changing, sometimes the mist was there, the next it was gone. This is Lindsay walking from the tower to the main building, where we enjoyed a traditional Moroccan breakfast.
For the first full day of our stay, Abderham took us along the road towards Tamatart, and then up through the trees to a call where we could get a good view of Tubkal. Just when we were getting a bit hungry, we walked through a herd of goats and over a rise, and there was a fantastic picnic that Mohammed had prepared and laid out for us, with cushions to sit on and hot mint tea. Very civilised. Then it was a walk downhill and back to the Casbah. Casper is a very special place in my opinion. It's a well-managed oasis of calm with some of the best views you can imagine in just about every direction.
we were honoured to meet up with Alice Morrison, who had been staying down in Imlil. Alison is an adventurer, a best-selling author, a BBC TV presenter and a speaker. She brought a copy of her Adventures in Morocco book with her, which I'm currently reading back in Edinburgh. Here are some clips taken in various parts of the Casbah. You can see how nice the place is. I was up very early the next morning to film the view from the tower. After breakfast, we left the Casbah with a derriham, a muleteer and a mule carrying our bags and headed west up a valley to the Tizium Zik Pass. We were heading to spend the next two nights in the remote trekking lodge owned by the Casbah in the unspoiled Azadin Valley. The walking pace was steady and it seemed that round every corner there were new views to enjoy in the clear mountain air. This time we knew what to expect and at the top of the pass there was our fantastic picnic lunch already laid out for us. Lots of finely chopped salads, bread and a tasty omelette. After lunch and the rest, it was mostly downhill into the Azadan Valley, with views of yet more mountains far to the southwest. There was hardly any traffic on the road down the valley. It was Ramadan, which meant that by the afternoon many people would be conserving their strength and staying at home. But I don't think this road ever gets busy. Once again, the views up the valley were awesome. The summit of Tubkal is somewhere behind that ridge. The trekking lodge has four bedrooms with our suite, but we were the only guests on the first night. There was a cook who prepared us a really good chicken tagine.
This is the sun rising over the remote Azadan Valley, a few miles from Imlil. It's very quiet, very peaceful. The next day was spent with Abderrahim walking round the valley below the trekking lodge. A really enjoyable day with more glorious weather. You can see how important water is to a valley like this and how it's directed around the fields.
The next day we walked back to Imlil via a different pass which started just beside the trekking lodge. Once again there was a picnic waiting for us, and not long after I'm pretty sure we walked up the old road where in 1987 we'd had a puncture in the pickup. And that was essentially the trip with a final night in a Kasbah de Tukkal. We'd revisited the area around Jebel Tukkal 35 years after climbing the mountains.